A warm welcome to all my lovely audience on IC Tales today. My name is Hiba and today we are in conversation with a beautiful woman indeed. Yes, you heard that right. We are in conversation with Dr. Namrata Soni, who is an aesthetic dentist and someone who gives parenting tips. It's an interesting combo. So let's get to know ma'am more. How, hi ma'am, how are you and how does it feel to be here? It feels good. Uh, I'm really happy that you guys could shortlist me and I'm here. Yes. Yes, we are also very happy to have you on board. So without talking any further, I think we should get started because I'm very excited to see how this conversation goes. Can we get started, ma'am? Okay, yeah. First of all, tell, tell me something about your profession and what is it like to be an aesthetic dentist? Um, so basically, aesthetic dentist is that part or that specialization of dentistry, which basically deals of in, enhancing people's smile and their teeth. So... Obviously, apart from the technical skills that you need, you also need like a lot of creativity and then a lot of information with detail. Yeah. But it's extremely rewarding because, you know, uh, it's it's amazing to see that patient get out of your chair and then look into the mirror and then just feel like, wow, like, you know, you could look like this also. Yeah. So I think yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun and extremely rewarding. And when did you decide that you want to bring in this parenting tips combination into your dentistry work as well? Uh, actually, I didn't decide that, very frankly, uh, but uh, after being a mom and then just going through my entire pregnancy journey and my friends, like, just how I've raised Adira, like, you know, she started eating when she was one year old on her own mm -hmm. and then she's screen free right now till when she's five years old. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not saying she's screen free, but she's not addicted to the screen or something like that. So my entire pregnancy journey, my friends and the people around me have been just seeing me and then these people just came they started approaching me for parenting advices so I was sort of like a passive counselor to a lot of my friends whenever they got pregnant or whenever they had issues with their kids so I and then among those people only they only pushed me that why don't you spread this to more people and why don't you start yeah. a page like this yeah. stuff like this that's how it started mm. I've not been taking it very seriously yet but I probably should <laughs> So let's just try to get you serious into this. I have a question regarding parenting tips. So a lot of uh, like in the new generation children, they are growing and developing very rapidly. Like their minds are different. So And they have so much knowledge right before their age, right? So what do you have to say about this? And how does it feel to be a parent to this generation children? Oh, yeah, that's there. Because I think uh, this generation is growing extremely fast. Like you feel them learning so so many new skills you like you know their knowledge is so much more at a, such a younger age than what we used to be there so I think it's exciting to see them grow so fast it's really rewarding as a parent like you know I think the proud moment that we gave to our parents was almost after two decades of their parenting journey mm -hmm. and I think these kids are going to make us feel happy about whatever we have catered to them yep. in a matter of time years or something like this so it's extremely exciting but at the same time it has its own challenges also like so you know they they have so much of access to resources and uh information on their fingertips that we have to be very careful of what they're exposed to and what they're not uh you know so and also, we also have to be on our fingertips. Like, you know, we have to be on our toes. We have to make sure that we are learning with them. We are upgrading with uh, with them. We have to adapt to new parenting styles. And you know, the traditional parenting method is, I don't think, is going to work with this generation. So it's the entire journey where you are also adapting, learning, unlearning new things. And then probably just trying mm. on your own kids. Very rightly said that, you know, with our kids, even parents are also growing and they have to adapt. So that's my major takeaway from your answer. Thank you so much for sharing that with us, ma'am. Let's move on to our next question again about parenting. So what advice do you have for new parents to bring up their kids in a good atmosphere? Um, I think something that I really believe in is uh, first, I think you should make sure that you have some time or certain time even if it's very small mm. the time through the day where you make sure that you are spending one-on-one -on -one time with your kid so you know you're sitting and listening to what your kid has to say just asking them a few questions like how was your day what went well what did not what is it that you did not like in the day like you know and 
which, which, and this time needs to be completely uninterrupted. Like, you know, you should not have people around or in your mind, you should not be thinking of what's next that you have to do through the day. Yeah. Or obviously, like, you know, your phone ringing or something like this. So even if that's five or 10 minutes of the time before you sleep, it's something that it's very important for your kid to feel attached to you. They feel secure and they feel that there's someone who's like just, they're coming, you know, they're coming like there's someone whom they can fall back for. And I think probably then developing good habits and making a routine, like where not only we are forcing them to have that routine, but also we are living a lifestyle, like, you know, good eating, uh, good meditating, practicing gratitude, having proper sleep so that their brain development also and their physical development also takes place properly. Okay. And at the same time, we are doing that with them. Mm -hmm. Small things like, you know, uh, I really like the part where we we uh, celebrate every small success and achievements what the kid does. Now, whether it could be like the first lap they've completed in their swimming or for the first time they fearfully, you know, like in spite of having a lot of fear, they try to jump in the swimming pool. Like there's very tiny things. And if you tend to celebrate these small things mm -hmm. in the smallest possible manner, like, you know, celebrations may not be measured but it just has to be there and it's like a positive encouragement to them that you know wow I did something and I think yeah. this is also important for you as a parent to celebrate the journey I guess yeah thank you so much for sharing your thoughts I'm sure the new parents watching this will have major takeaways so mm -hmm. thank you so much once again let's dig into dentistry because we haven't discussed that in a while so a lot of people from a very long time they have this fear of going to the dentist they're like I don't want to go I'm scared so what you being a dentist what would you want to tell these people on how to get rid of this fear I have to say dental fear is real like I think at least 75% of the people uh, have, if not an extreme dental anxiety, they have mild dental anxiety for sure. And there are always going to be 10% of the people who are very scared of going to dentists. And I'm talking about adults. I'm not even catering to kids. But uh, frankly, dentistry has evolved so much that now we have so many techniques and advances, technology, methods that um fearing a dent like the dental experience can be extremely smooth so you know we have nitrous sedation in our practice we are actually the the my clinic is actually the pioneer of happy gas dentistry in pune so it's like and as dentists also we make sure like we take extra efforts to make sure that the patient is very comfortable so and majorly these fear is something that we've carried forward because of either our childhood experience or someone has told us about it like it's a passed on fear so okay. I think dentistry is not fearful now like yeah mm -hmm. previously probably was but now it's so much easier right so again I think people who are scared including me when even when I go to the dentist I also freak out very often so I think these tips will really help the people to get rid of their fear thank you so much for doing that ma'am uh, tell me one thing that you love about being a dentist I love about being a dentist. Okay. One major um, thing that tops the whole charts. I think uh, something that I really like after I've become a dentist is the continuous learning that this field has to have. Like, you know, it's like in general, dentistry is evolving at such a fast rate and yep. reading and continuously upgrading yourself is so important right. that... I think that's my favorite part, yeah. That you learn every single day? Yeah, I just like to just probably, because if you have not, if you don't know what's going on or what's new, you do not deliver the best of what yes. you can do. Very true. Nice to see your one major learning. So great job on that. Let's move on to our next question, which I think is a very, it's a very different question, which hasn't been asked in a very long time. Uh, you know, like divorces and single parenting is becoming very, very common now. So what kind of advice do you have for single parents to bring up their kids nicely? Um, single parents, yeah. I think with single parents, uh, I've also had a lot of parents who've come and spoken to me about how they should do it and stuff. Um, some things that I usually tell them is that 
first is don't you know uh, don't be hesitant to ask for help or probably use or take advantage of the resources that we have around yeah. because you not you, you cannot raise a kid like it's not easy to raise a kid all alone you know if you have help and people around it just gets easier like you know so it helps you release the stress and also you know you build a community around you or build a network around you where you know you can bank on or you can trust them when it comes to your kids and you can yeah. probably drop them maybe when you want to do certain small things or something like this so it just gets lighter on you and then it's also a way for you to relieve your emotions and your feelings like that mm-hmm. i would also want to say that it's very important to prioritize your own self like what happens is not only single parent i think just in general all parents once we become parents we tend to forget our own selves and i firmly believe that till the time you're not you cannot give 100% to your kids unless and until your glass is completely full yeah. so it's important to make sure that you take some time out where you're giving time for your exercise or maybe you know just reading or doing some meditating doing exactly. something that makes you feel happy you know celebrating your successes your achievements as a parent also so mm-hmm. i think that's very essential and second th- third thing is that a lot of time this is not only applicable to single parents i think to everybody that mm-hmm. we tend we always want to do more for our kids than than whatever we are doing now yeah. and in the entire journey uh what happens is we it takes a toll on us physically and mentally so what i think is important is you should take one day at a time focus on what's more important and do that first exactly. and make sure that you're not very hard on yourself like i always believe kids are going to grow up like you know irrespective of whether you're going to do this or no so just take it slow and take it nice like yes i don't know <laughs> yeah. yeah and that did answer my question and taking it light like you said our last question very light question a fun loving question which i want you to be as open as possible when you're answering so since you are uh, juggling around between two things one is dentistry and one is parenting tips if you had to pick just one and give away the other which one would you choose and why give us the answer in the most creative and unique way possible <laughs> um i think i would really suck if i had to choose one uh very frankly i don't think i can be a full time dentist anymore like yeah i was a full time dentist before but now if i'm a full time dentist i think there is this part of me which will be so guilty that and feel so bad the fact that i'm missing on to so much time with my own daughter which right. i totally miss and like you know i totally enjoy like it's so much fun to just be there for them and i don't think and i i'm very sure i can't be a full time mom also <laughs> uh so yeah uh, because i think i'll be very depressed because if i am a full time mom i think i lose my own identity of being a dentist so i i think i'm just going to choose the best of both worlds i don't think i can <laughs> i i can do one thing i'll be very depressed <laughs> I thought I'd put you in the puddle and get you confused to pick between one, but you so gracefully answered that you will choose both. So thank you so much for doing that with us, and your answer was on point. So thank you so much, ma'am. With that being said, we've now come to the end of this interview. I think I had a great twenty-minute session where I learned so many different things, and it was wonderful having you on board. Thank you so much, Shiba.